Introducing the Traveler's Choice Max Porter 2 Spinner Luggage Trunk. Spinner Trunk Luggage. Luggage Trunk Spinner Luggage. One of them. <laughs> the name is a little bit long. <clears throat> the Traveler's Choice Max Porter 2 Large Trunk Spinner Luggage. Anyway, here's the bag. I took this bad boy to Iceland on my most recent trip, and let me tell you, I've been an aspiring minimalist for the entirety of my adult years, and with that in mind for travel, I almost never intentionally check a bag. I've been forced to a few times because I non-rev, last on the plane, there's no space. In that instance, you do what you have to, but this is the first time that I honest to God checked a bag, and it was divine. So let's talk about this bag and why it made my trip to Iceland so gosh darn good. Oh, I do want to mention, like, I am 5'2". This bag is not this tall. I have it on a very official bag stand. Let's talk about a couple of bag specs. Now, first off, this is made of 100% polycarbonate hard shell. On each corner, it's got what I'm assuming are also polycarbonate bumpers. When it's coming out of the baggage carousel, you have something to protect your corners. For size, it is 31 inches tall, 17 inches across, and 14 inches deep. And you have an interesting 30-70 split. Now, with checked bags, the dimensions are not as important as the linear inches. This bag maxes out at 62 linear inches for your legacy carriers, Delta American United, it should fit. Here's the super impressive part, capacity. It holds 103 liters. The last bit is that it clocks in at 13.3 pounds. Now, most airlines will allow you to carry a checked bag up to about 50 pounds. So just for reference, this is gonna take one fifth of your weight. Keep that in mind. However, 40 pounds of clothing is still a lot of clothing. <laughs> There are a lot of great trunks on the market, so let's compare. We're going to be looking at the Away, Monos, Traveler's Choice, Calpac, and Ramoa. How do these stack up in linear inches, which is the length plus the width plus the height? The Away comes in at 62 inches, Monos at 60 inches, Traveler's Choice at 62, Calpac at 60, and the Ramoa at 62 inches. But size is nothing without packing capacity. So let's check liters. Away is at 107 liters, Monos at 89 liters, Traveler's Choice at 103, Calpac at 108, and Remo at 101. Next, we'll look at weight in pounds. Mind you, none of these bags are aluminum. The Away comes in at 12.1 pounds, Monos at 13.2, Traveler's Choice at 13.3, Calpac at 11.8, and Remo at 11.9 pounds. Here are the prices, at least at the time of filming. The Away bag is $435, Monos $455, Traveler's Choice $299, Calpac $290, and oh my god, Ramoa, stop! Let's talk about the exterior of the bag. So as I said, it's 100% polycarbonate shell, and I really do like that they used this cool textured material. So one thing that I think it really does well is that it's going to hide some blemishes. That is just a really good design feature for a checked bag. I mean, have you ever seen the way, when you look out your window, how they toss bags around? The other feature that I really want to talk about, and I think this bag has it in spades, are handles. The handles are so good on this. And what I like about them is that they have what I like to call daylight between the bag and the handle. So what that means is that you can easily get your hand on this bag with no issue. There's no problem grabbing it. The other thing that I think is really cool is that once it's lifted up, you can see that they actually use metal in between. So you're not at a risk of like this snapping apart or trying to lift this when it's fully packed and hearing a piece of plastic just pop off. The handle on the side of the back, which is gonna be the exact same design, and that is flat, a bit of daylight so that you can easily just get your hand in here and grab it. You also have two handles on the front of the bag. This handle is actually gonna be a lot more flat, but it's still really easy to grip. And the reason why is because they put a concave portion 
behind the handle so that your hand can still very easily slide in with no problem. And you have two handles on the front, which I think is really convenient if I need to grab it like this. It takes nothing to move this around, even when the bag is fully packed. The other handle that it has is right on the bottom. So here you've got a solid piece of what looks like the polycarbonate that's the same used on the corners and the wheel well, but you've got a little divot in here so that you can easily just reach in and grab it. So I could easily grab one of the front handles and the bottom handle and lift. On the bottom, you've got rubberized feet. The most important handle on any bag is the one that you're using to wheel it. And for this, they use a T-Cruiser handle. What I like about this handle is the ergonomics. So it's made to fit in your hand very easily. And with the button placement, because it's slightly forward, when I'm holding it, my hand isn't pressing down on the button. So instead of doing a wider handle that comes up from either side, you're using up less of your internal bag space. For me personally, I don't like the handles that are midway. I would prefer either a wide handle because it doesn't take up any of your internal bag space or something that's right in the middle. You might be looking at this handle and thinking, oh, I mean, that's a cool enough handle, except what do you do when you have a bag? Let's say I've got my bag with my luggage passed through. Now, I can still carry this pretty easily, but what you're gonna notice is that it's gonna essentially use up all of your space because this is as high as the handle can go. The other reason why I would caution against maybe using a luggage handle is that this is wide enough to hold it, but I do worry about it shifting from side to side. Whereas with your traditional bags, because they take up more space in the middle, you don't have to worry about that. And initially I thought, well, that's a design flaw. What am I gonna do if I can't like stably have my bag sit on the luggage pass-through? They have thought of a way to get around that. You've got this cool little piece on the front that just has a little lip that you can lift up. What you can do is feed this through your bag and secure it on the front. And now you've got a lovely place to hold your handbag. I ended up not having a bag that I needed to carry on here, but I was traveling with my sister and she had a duffel. It was giving her so much trouble. And I was like, I got you, Misty. And so I threw her duffel fully packed out onto the front of the bag, had no issues. Almost last but not least, at the top of the bag, you have a TSA lock that secures your zippers. I think that any bag that comes out nowadays should have a built-in lock of some sort. I do want you to look at how meaty this zipper is and how great these zipper pulls are. They're all metal, which I'm a big fan of. The last thing on the exterior that I want to talk about are the wheels. So you've got four omnidirectional wheels. With some suitcases, you'll see that they have a feature where they'll recess the wheel well farther into the bag. I like that this actually sits at the bottom so that you're not taking up your internal bag space. It uses just enough to make sure that the wheel has um, clearance from the bag, but not so much that it's eating into your bag. And these felt very secure as I was rolling. Oh, snaps! I got to the end of talking about the exterior of the bag. I didn't even talk about the color. So this bag comes in some really fun colors. You've got your standard like black, slate gray, which are cool. But then you've got this beautiful navy, the army green, oh my gosh. They were like neck and neck with each other on which do I need in my life? And this one out by a hair, but that green is gorgeous. The red is beautiful too. And if you're someone who needs like a lot of coordination, because your handles and your wheels and your zippers are red, if you got it in the red, it would look just so utterly chic. They have one that I think is kind of funny. It's I think it might be a special edition Olympics American flag one. A little much for me, but if that's your vibe, go for it. That's the entire exterior. Let's take a look at the interior. We talked about it's not a 50-50 split. It is 70-30. But one thing that I really enjoy about that is when you put this on a luggage stand and prop it against a wall, instead of having to put it like this, where it feels like it takes up your entire hotel room, you can prop it like this. And so 
for me, when I packed, I packed all of my clothes in the deeper side of the bag. And then I put things like shoes, toiletries, um, accessories, things that I just needed quick access to. That way I could just kind of unzip a corner, reach in, get whatever I needed, and then just zip it right back up. I like that you just have like an X strap instead of something large to push things down. Do I feel like this material is super luxury? No. And it's like your basic, just to keep things organized, not necessarily to do anything for compression, which personally for me, in a bag this big, I don't think you should have to compress anything. This can hold 100 liters. If you're having 100 liters and still needing to compress, you gotta start really evaluating what you're bringing. I brought like snow bibs, three coats, and I was able to fit everything into this so comfortably. One thing that's really cool is that you have these dividers. So the bag comes with two dividers and it's probably just like a hard plastic in here. And you've got some, um, Velcro is the brand. So what is it called when it's not branded Velcro? Whatever the non-branded name for Velcro is, you have along the sides and along here. One thing that I really enjoyed about having these dividers in the bag is that I didn't really need packing cubes. So when I started packing, I thought, no, we're going to take our packing cubes. I used them on the, the start of the trip, but by the time we were leaving the second hotel, I ended up just taking everything out of the packing cube and using the internal organization. And that was kind of a game changer, being able to say, you know, I don't need to buy any additional organization. I can just use what's in the bag. The other thing I do want to mention on this is that you have this removable clear waterproof bag. Now they call this a toiletry bag and personally where I found this to be really useful is that when I went to the Blue Lagoon in Iceland, I was able to put my swimsuit into here. And so if you go to like swim in the morning and you don't have enough time for your swimsuit to dry, you don't have to worry about getting any of the other items in your bag wet. I'll probably never end up using this for toiletries. It'll be used as a really good wet bag. The other thing that this bag has is a mesh pocket at the bottom. And initially I kind of thought it'd be one of those pockets that I never use because oftentimes I'll get bags like this that have all these extra pockets and I never put anything in them. What I used this pocket for at the bottom was a place to put my underwear. It took nothing to just be able to reach in, pass the clothing, unzip it, grab a pair of underwear, go take a shower. So that's the main cavity of the bag. So one thing I do want to show is where this handle sits. Cool to see is that this is your polycarbonate shell. This is the back that we saw earlier. And then this is the handle. It's in a metal casing. It feels very stable when you're holding it and when you're rolling the bag. You've got no internal padding. But you put your clothing at the bottom and you're going to create your own internal padding. The reason why I wanted to show that is just so that you can see exactly what this bar is like. I was able to fold like a t-shirt t-shirt and then I have a smooth area all the way across. So next you have the smaller side of the bag. And even by smaller, that's still relative. This actually is still deeper than your standard hard side carry-on luggage. Now, what I like about this is that you have two additional pockets. One is a mesh pocket that goes about half of the height of the bag. And then you have another waterproof pocket. One thing I do want to note is that even the internal zippers are all metal. I cannot remember what bag I talked about this on. It might have been the Monos. They had these nice metal zippers, but there was no real grip to them. Like it felt like if you just put on lotion and tried to unzip something, your finger would come off of it. But these zippers have a tiny little bend to them. And it's just such a cool little design thing because it gives them the tiniest bit of grip so it doesn't feel like your hand is gonna slip and slide. Okay, so then we flip it open and now you just have a giant unobstructed kind of bucket where you can place things. So again, it's just the polycarbonate shell, but when we talked about the front of the bag, I said that these handles have a little divot or a concave area where you can easily get your hand in here. 
that is that. Let me know if it's overkill to like unzip bags and show you the inside of them. I don't know if anyone looks at that or cares about it like I do. And if you don't care, I can totally just keep that to myself. Despite the fact that this is the shallower side of the bag, by no means would I genuinely call it shallow. It can still hold a ton. So like if I were to put a pair of Doc Martens in, it still zips up with plenty of room. So let's talk about our likes and our opportunities. You had to know, number one, what was I gonna say was my biggest like? The handles. I'm a sucker for a handle that's easy to grip, that doesn't feel like you're gonna have to like wedge your hand under. And I like that they actually differentiated in how the styles of the handles are. I like that the ones at the top and the side are just way more um, convex. And then here they can do a flatter handle because they create a concave area. I like the, the metal bits that they use to make sure that it's reinforced that even when you're lifting this bag fully packed out, it's not gonna be a problem. I really do like the reinforced corners because that is a problem I have with some of my other bags is that when I've been forced to check like my carry-ons, they come out a little banged up because they keep on getting thrown and hit on this. I like that this material, that it has some texture so that little imperfections like little scuff marks are not obvious and apparent when you're looking at the bag. Other things I really enjoy, the T-Cruiser handle. And more than the actual ergonomic portion, though I think that that did fit in my hand really nicely, I just like that this is much smaller than your standard handle. So when you're packing inside, it doesn't feel like this is interrupting anything. Internal organization, those two panels that are removable, so you can move them to wherever you need. And I actually appreciated the pockets. They ended up working out for me in this bag in a way that they haven't worked out in other bags. They actually felt like they were there for a reason and ended up being necessary. I don't know if this is an opportunity. If you are packing a ton of, let's say camera equipment in here, one thing to be cognizant of is that it's literally just the shell, then you've got the lining fabric. So if you're looking for something that's incredibly padded to carry, let's say filming equipment, a lot of electronics, you're gonna need to put in your own padding and or look for a different bag. For me, because I was carrying clothing, wasn't a problem. So I do think that even while the bag being 13 pounds is a little bit heavy, it's well utilized weight. You've got metal components where you need metal components. I did not realize I was gonna like this so much, but the 70-30 split. Like legitimately, I want that in a carry-on bag. I want a carry-on bag that's not a 50-50 split. I just really enjoyed packing in this bag. Let's talk about my final thoughts about the Max Porter trunk. Would I buy this? And that's kind of with the caveat that I did not buy this, it was gifted. If I had just gone on the trip by myself and used this bag, I probably would have left thinking, ah, it's just a checked bag. They're all the same. But after the third hotel, I was still comfortably able to pack back into it every single night and just seeing the struggles that my sister went through. Hey, Misty, how's it going? Um, well, you know, I'm a little behind on my packing. And... I just gotta get the shit in the bag and zip. Could I give you a hand? No, I got it. She didn't bring more clothing than I did. She didn't bring more shoes than I did. I brought a pair of hiking boots, snow boots, and a platform sneaker. And none of them were like lightweight, none of them were small. Seeing that we both brought the same amount of stuff, her bag was overweight, so she had to pay an overweight bag fee and I was able to get mine down to 49.5 pounds right at the edge. And so I felt like the distribution, being able to fill it up without it going over weight, for what it is and what it can carry, it's a very lightweight bag and I appreciate that. I think those are my final thoughts, is that now after traveling and basically being on what felt like an entire comparison trip and seeing my sister struggle, I would buy this bag. The only thing that I would do differently is that 
and I will actually do this in the future, is that I'm gonna buy the clear plastic protector that goes over it. Like, I can see that this material will hide the scrapes and scratches, but at the same time, suitcases are not cheap. It's not like you go out to the store and you buy like a $50 suitcase that you're gonna have for the next 10 years. These bags are investments. It's worth considering if you're buying this bag because you like the aesthetics, and I totally get it, totally behind it because gorgeous bag, you wanna make sure that you also have the protection that you need for it. And so to me, if you're buying it, calculate in the added investment of buying the clear plastic to go over it. I mean, I've been filming for like an hour and a half. I think I've said literally everything I could possibly say about this bag. Peace.